Okay, so get yourself ready for your yoga practice. Just going to move this from last night. So sit yourself in a good. I think your mic's on. Okay, sorry. Okay, so sit yourself in a good cross leg position. Just wriggle about, just make sure that you feel evenly placed. Then move the buttock flesh back and out to the side so that you're sitting directly onto your seat bones and lift the chest, elevate the spine up towards the ceiling, drawing your shoulders down away from your ears. Listen to the sound of the breath as it enters and as it exits. The long, slow, deep, deliberate inhalations, long, slow, deep, deliberate exhalations. Just look down at the floor, look at something that's not moving. Filling the lungs from the bottom to the top and emptying the lungs from the top to the bottom. Bring your hands into Namaste, push your palms firmly together, lengthen the armpits into the elbows. And then with an exhalation, allow your eyes to gently close. So focus in on long, slow, deep, Deliberate inhalations and exhalations. Just listening to the sound of the breath as it enters and as it exits, just observing the difference between the in-breath and the out-breath. And then when you're ready, draw your chin down to meet your chest. Spend a moment to seek to generate a genuine heartfelt sense of gratitude for something or someone or somewhere. Holding on to that feeling of abundance in your heart area. And then gently release the backs of your hands down towards your knees, palms facing upwards. And just lift up into the chest, drawing your shoulders down away from your ears. Take a deep inhalation in through the nose. Hold on to the fronts of the knees and 
with the exhalation, elevate the heart area upwards. Draw in the shoulders down away from your ears. Take another deep inhalation and this time with the exhalation, turn to the right side again, elevating the heart area upwards. And then come back to the centre, hold onto your knees, lift up into the chest, take a deep inhalation and then turn to the right, so to the left, sorry, turn to the left, drawing your abdomen across, your ribs across, your shoulders across, drawing your focus into sensations of the pose into the resistance and then come back to the center so come off your lift and sit back on your heels so if you sit back on your heels and wriggle into your inner heels Press the shins into the floor, lift up into the chest. Again, just take deep inhalations, deep exhalations, listen into the sound of the breath. And then come forwards, hinging at the hips, keeping the seat bones down and then stretching your arms away wriggling into the hips spreading the fingers spreading the palms and then release your arms down release the head draw the tailbone down towards the heels breathing evenly and deeply listening to the sound of the breath Press in into the front of the forehead, pressing that down into the floor, just to bring quietness to the frontal lobes of the brain. Come up onto your knees, turn your toes under, and then come up into dog down. Just listening to the breath. Listening to the in-breath, listening to the out-breath. Working to straighten the legs, lifting the fronts of the thighs up towards the top of the leg, turning the fronts of the thighs inwards. Broadening the backs of the thighs outwards. Just taking long, deep, deliberate inhalations and exhalations.
then step your feet forwards, come up into a standing position and then have your feet as wide apart as your mat, bringing your outer edge of your bringing the outer edge of your feet in line with the edge of the mat and then elevate up into the chest raise your arms upwards if there's a problem with your back that's aggravated by forward bending then you can come forwards into half utanasana bringing your hands onto uh, onto a table top or onto the blocks as we usually do otherwise bring the thumbs into the crease of the elbows wrap your fingers around your elbow Extend your elbows up towards the ceiling and then hinge at the hips and then hang down. Letting your head hang down, but encouraging the legs to lift out of the floor. So hit your weight back so that your weight is in your heels. And then find the square of the heel and stamp it down and then lift up into the seat bones. Spread the toes away from that square of the heel all the time tightening the kneecaps. Just breathing in through the nose and out through the nose, listening to the breath. Feeling that you're in contact with the center of the heel, not rolling into the inside of the heel or the outside. Just let the feet adjust so that you roll onto the outside of the heel, then onto the inside of the heel, and then find the center. Breathing evenly and deeply, listening to the breath. To stay foot minded, maintain your focus on the heels, keeping your focus on the heels. Observe whether you're working evenly on the heels, if both heels are working evenly, or one is less willing to work than the other. Release your hands down to the floor and then just walk your hands back into dog down. Have your hands shoulder width apart this time. Have your feet hip width apart and then lift up into dog down again. Letting your head hang down. Just breathing evenly. Just listening to the breath, filling the lungs from the bottom to the top, emptying the lungs from the top to the bottom. So bring your feet together and we're going to do Ekapada um, Savanasana. So Ekapada is one foot. So spread the top, so have the feet together in the middle of your mat. So make sure that your feet are directly in the middle of your hands. Spread the toes of the left foot really deeply. And then with a straight leg, elevate the right leg up to the ceiling. Keep that leg in Tadasana. So turn the front of the thigh inwards as you do in dog down. So that the toes are pointing directly to the floor and the hips are level. So the lifted leg hopefully is in line with the upper body so keep turning the thigh of that lifted leg so that the hips come level and then bring that leg down 
just reset with the feet together in the middle turning the thighs inward so that the heels start to separate spread the toes of the right foot and then lift that left leg up keep turning the front of that thigh up aiming to keep the hips level breathing evenly and deeply rotating that leg and then bring that leg down and then step the feet towards your hands and then come up into Tadasana just be in Tadasana in the edge of the feet together lifting up into the chest just take a deep inhalation take deep exhalations and then raise your arms over your head so I'm going to go sideways so I've got a bit more space so lift my arms so bring your arms into Urdhva Hastasana So the arms are parallel to each other, breathing evenly. Go back to the squares of the heels, hit your legs back so that your weight is in the heels, in the centre of the heels. Stamp those heels down and lift up and out of the feet. and release just bring the hands in front interlock the fingers turn the palms all the way out and then raise your arms over your head drawing your shoulders down away from your ears lifting into the heart area trying to wing the elbows beyond your ears and release and then swap the interlock of your fingers so that the opposite index finger is on the top of the stack to so get your hands right into the web inner, get your fingers right into the web inner of the hands turn the palms all the way out and then raise your arms over your head and then just release your arms and then bring yourself back into Tadasana lift up into the chest spread the toes of the left foot and then bring your shorts up a little if, on the left leg if you can so spread the shorts of your on your left of your left foot and then bring the right foot as high up into the thigh as you can if you need to give yourself something to help you to balance then just use a post or just a chair or the wall so bring the foot right up into the inner groin and then bring your arms down and then lift up into the heart area just spend a little time to find the center of the heel so you might need a wall to give you some support for that but just see if you can find the center of the heel it employs that it requires that you use more of your foot lift up into the chest and then raise your arms up over your head so stay in foot minded keeping the center of the heel active turn in the front of the thigh inwards turning the front shin inwards from the little toe to the big toe side finding that balance through 
the levelness of the foot. The foot will fluctuate, of course, but see if you can find evenness in the centre of the heel. And then release the leg and then come back. So if you can raise your shorts on the other side, just it works better to bring the foot onto skin. If it's on material, it will slip about more. So skin on skin for this is better. Be in Tadasana. Spread the toes of the right foot. Stamp that right foot down into the floor and then bring the other heel right up into the inner groin if you can, right to the top of the leg. And then lift up into the chest, just have your arms stretching down like you're doing Tadasana. Just finding that inner heel. So that can take some time to stabilize the leg. What you've got to do is turn this front shin inwards to see if you can just find that action. And then raise your arms over your head. Arms parallel, preferably. Palms facing each other, stretching up into the little finger side of the, of the hand. Stretching the thumbs towards the back of the room. Just remaining focused on the foot and the heel. Trying to find that center of the heel. So it requires some considerable focus, doesn't it? Release the arms, release the leg. And then come back into Tadasana, lifting up into the chest. Bring your arms out nice and wide into the chest and then step or jump your feet apart. Turn your right toes in. So you turn your left toes in, turn your right leg and foot all the way out for Trikonasana. Lift up into the chest. And then come down, finding the shin, just observing how the pose feels for you this morning. Just look down as your head directly over your foot, squeezing that front hip, buttock bone forwards. So the right buttock bone forwards, turning the chest up to face the ceiling. And keep the back heel pressing firmly down into the floor, into the square of the heel. What's happening with the heel of that front leg? Are you rolling onto the outside edge of that foot? If you are, lengthen from the outer hip, outer heel into the big toe. And back to the center. Swap your feet around, turn your right toes in, your left leg and foot all the way out, just making sure you're nice and wide with the legs. Take a deep inhalation and then reach over, finding the shin, pressing that back heel firmly into the floor, turning the chest up to face the ceiling. from 
there just come back up into the center bring the feet parallel and then step or jump your feet back together lift up into your chest breathe evenly and deeply hitting the legs back lifting up into the chest just breathing evenly to um, settle your energy and your breath and then just come down onto your knees bring your hands shoulder width apart feet hip width apart and then go up into dog down again and just observe as you get up there just observe how it feels does it feel different to how it felt at the beginning Tilt in the tailbone and the seat bones up to face the ceiling as much as you can. Remember that cat and cow pose. So when you do the cat, you turn the tailbone in and the back rounds. So we don't want that shape for dog down. We want the cow shape where you lift the seat bones away from the back so the thighs tilting the tailbone up towards the ceiling lengthening the front abdomen into the diaphragm into the collarbone into the chin Okay, and then just come down onto your knees. Just sit back on your heels. Just observe how your energy has changed. Observe the energy in the head and in the shoulders and arms and in the chest and in the legs. sense of lightness that comes through our practice. Okay, come down onto your back. Just sit back on your heels and then, sorry, not sit back on your heels, sit down on your back and then come into Supta Baddha Soles of the feet together, allowing the pelvic region to broaden out use blocks under your thighs if you need to but allowing this openness of the um, pelvic region so have your hands on your lower ribs for the moment just observe your breath through the rising and falling of the abdomen and the expansion and lifting of the chest. Just feeling the rise and the fall of the abdomen. Drawing your attention into the sensations within the body. And then raise your arms up to the ceiling. Have the arms um, parallel and the palms open and facing each other. Lengthen up into the little finger side. But try and keep the square of the shoulder blades down on the floor 
So try and keep the outer shoulder blades down on the floor as you extend up into the little finger side. So that's a little bit of a contradiction of action. So just see if you can plant the outer shoulder blade down on the floor, but still lift up into the little finger side of the hands. Imagine you're holding a box of air and you're going to squeeze that box of air, but there's resistance. Try and hold that box of air and then present it down to the floor. So lengthen your arms away along the floor. And then I want you to see if you can bring your thumbs onto the floor at the same time. So all the time, even when you can't see the box, you're still holding that box of air. Just slowly bringing it down to the floor. So do it several times because it's much harder than it sounds, isn't it? So squeezing that box of air and presenting it down to the floor, but keeping the arms straight as you do it. Trying to get the thumbs to touch the floor at the same time. So maybe the thumb, if, if the same thumb keeps on reaching the floor first, Perhaps it's suggesting that there's a stiffness in the shoulder of the slower thumb. Just stay focused on that energy between the two hands. That box of air, it feels like a solid box rather than a spongy one. Okay, don't worry if you did manage that or you didn't, just rest your arms on your lower ribs again and just again just observing that feeling of the abdomen rising and falling with the breath. And then bring your knees together, your feet apart, just to rest out your spot, your hips. Just breathing evenly. And then bring your feet as close to the seat bones as you can. Bring the feet flat onto the floor. And then draw your right knee in towards your chest and then allow that right foot to cross over on top of the left thigh. And then hold on to the foot with the left hand. And then lengthen the knee, that right knee away from the body, just opening up that front knee. You can give a gentle encouragement by press. Don't press into the knee, press into the thigh just to open up the front of the hip. And then release, but keep the foot where it is. So you can bring the foot into the inner pelvic bone, but if you can't reach there, it doesn't really matter. You can just bring your foot anywhere onto the top of that thigh. So keep it there and then bring the left knee in towards the body, grip around the back of the left knee and then draw that left knee in towards the chest so keep the tailbone down as you do and you should feel a good stretch at the back of the thigh if you don't feel that stretch and your foot is in the inner um in in the inner hip inner pelvic bone then bring the foot towards the top of the knee a bit more. And then gently release and then bring the feet close to the seat bones, bring the feet flat on the floor. Just breathing evenly 
and then draw your left knee in towards the chest. Let that left foot cross over on top of the right thigh and then hold onto that left foot with the right hand and then lengthen that left knee away from the body. You can give it some gentle encouragement by pressing into the thigh, not into the knee. Just to open up the front of the hip. And then just release that foot, uh, release the thigh, but keep the foot in place. And then bring the right knee in towards the chest, grip around the back of the right knee, and then draw that knee in towards the chest. Just feeling the stretch of the glutes and the hamstrings. And again, if the foot is in the pelvic region, then you can bring up the thigh a little bit more, just for a bit of extra stretch. And then just gently release your leg and then just stretch yourself along the floor, just come into a Shavasana shape, just holding your hands on your lower ribs, just let the legs release. Just breathing evenly and deeply. Get hold of a block. So we're going to go into Setu Banda, pull the feet in towards the seat bones, lift up into the, lift the seat bones up onto, so that you can come onto the, onto the brick. So the flat of the, sacrum spine presses into the block and then hold onto your knees gather your shoulder blades together and then either stay with bent knees or if it feels okay in your back then stretch one leg stretch the other if that feels okay then you can stretch both legs away Feeling that stretch at the front of the hip, at the broadening action of the pelvis. Listening to the breath. And then just bring your feet back onto the, onto the mat. Just bending your knees. And then lifting the seat bones up off the brick. Maybe you have to come up onto your tiptoes in order to get there. Just adjust your shoulders. Guide yourself down onto the floor. And then pull your knees in towards your chest. Just have a little rock from top to bottom, from side to side, just a gentle massage on the spine. Oh. 
and then just rock yourself up into a seated position just come into cross legs just lift up into the chest elevating the spine upwards taking a deep inhalation in through the nose Lifting up into the chest and then with an exhalation turn into the right side. Drawing your abdomen across your ribs and your shoulders. Come back to the centre, just hold on to the knees, lift up into the chest, take a deep inhalation in through the nose and then turn to the left. and then come back to the center okay just get yourself a bolster and we're going to finish in rather than in shavasana we're going to finish in the restorative surfboard pose so get a block that you're going to rest your head on and then have your folded blanket oh that's really badly folded let me just fold it better so just have that folded blanket over the top of the of the block for your head just for softness if you've got something from underneath your shins like a rolled up blanket or a little this is falling apart a bit a little bolster then have that from underneath your shins so just lay yourself along the front of the bolster your chin needs to be free of the um, end of the bolster so for me that means my pelvis is on the bolster, but it depends on your body length. The most important thing is that your chin isn't trapped. You can bring your head down and your chin is free of the end of the bolster. Just stretch your arms away a little bit over your, towards the head side of the floor and then just gently release into the bolster. Just listen to the sound of the breath. Just allowing the forehead to rest into the into the block.
Okay, bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Push yourself up into a seated position. Just sit back on your heels for a moment. Just observe your energy. And then just sit yourself on your bolster. Come into a good cross-legged position. Just hold on to your, bring your hands into Namaste and lift up into the chest. Draw your breath in through your nose and down into the abdomen. Conscious of the energy that you have released through your practice this morning. That good positive energy from the extensions and the forward bends and the twists and the inversions. And then draw your chin down to meet your chest. Just spend a moment to seek to acknowledge the positive energy you've created inside. And then send some of that positive energy into the world. gently release the backs of your hands down toward your knees palms facing upwards and as you raise your head allow your eyes to softly open and the focus to softly come back thank you very much so hopefully you feel as though you've really lifted your energy and given yourself some good energy to put into your day so thank you very much for joining us